okay welcome welcome back to lecture 29 on riemannian symmetric space so in the last lecture we have seen that if g is a compact lie group then uh, g is a riemannian symmetric space and we have also uh, determined the riemannian symmetric 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 pair in that case so <clears throat> we have seen that so, so let g be a Lie group, a connected Lie group, so that this R G is compact. It's compact. Then we have seen that then this G cross G and uh, delta G cross G is a Riemannian symmetric space and uh, the corresponding RSC is G. Uh, is a Riemannian symmetric space. Okay, so this much we have seen, and towards the end of the lecture, I have really told you that uh, to find some example of Riemannian symmetric space G comma H for which H is non compact. And the more examples which we have really seen that for those actually it is compact. Okay, so now we are want to really find some examples of the management of pair G comma H for which this H is non compact. We want to find some of them. So let us first. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Is anybody asking some? Okay. So. So a. So let. G is equal to k cross R M. Where k is a compact connected Lie group. And this n is greater than equal to 1. So this, uh, this is a, so if you look at this rgg, this is really r uh, k cross rn. And k cross R n. So this is actually R k k k R R n. Now this is actually isomorphism. Since k is compact, therefore this is compact. So this is iso isomorphic to sorry. This is isomorphic to R k k k. And this is R since R n is abelian, so this is actual identity so therefore it will be isomorphic to rkk and since this is compact uh, k is compact so therefore this is compact hence rg g is compact now the by previous discussion and this by Previous discussion. This thing del G cross G and delta G cross G is a Riemannian symmetric pair. Now, but delta G cross G is isomorphic to G and G is really K cross R and therefore it is non compact. This is actually non compact. Hence, we get an example where this this thing H G simply minus symmetric pair G comma H so that H is non compact. This is a very uh, this is a uh, this is a not a simple example because we need something about this Riemannian symmetric pair. But we can produce some easier examples. Now say 
so let uh, g is equal to really rn cross rn so define sigma from g cross g by this thing sigma of u g is really u of minus okay. now sigma of u g is equal to u g this implies if and only if this u of minus p is equal to really u and uh, for that uh, i get v is equal to zero so hence we will get this thing uh, okay i will take h is equal to zero. hence h is equal to g sigma i will take h is equal to g sigma this is really rn cross g okay and this is actually non compact and connected right? Compact and uh, connected. So now, since okay, 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 R G H, since G is abelian, okay, so this will be identity as G is abelian because I have discussed this uh, as G is abelian. Okay. Hence, R G is H is compact. Because this is single term, so so this is compact. Hence we we will get that what? Hence we get um, R n cross R n is R n cross zero. This is very non symmetric. And uh, the corresponding R s s is what? RSS is really Rn cross Rn mod Rn cross zero, and this will be diffeomorphism to Rn. So now the thing is, um, we also know that. Uh, This is uh, Rn. Uh, so we got for S O N mod S O N is also R. So you see that uh, hence we see that uh, the two remaining symmetric pair sphere. This thing R N cross R N. Rn cross zero and Rn. This uh, these two remaining symmetric give give rise to the same remaining symmetric pairs. Okay, so this is an example. So you can sort of this is a simpler example. But you can sort of generalize this example to produce a more uh, complicated example like this thing. So let G1 okay, be any non compact connected abelian group. So that this R G one is compact. This is possible. For instance, you can take G take uh, G G one is equal to K cross R. You can take that. Okay. So G one be any non-compact connected abelian group so that R G one G one is compact. So let G to be any connected uh, abelian group. So define. Uh, okay. So G to be any connected abelian uh, group. 
and uh, you know that uh, we know that uh, since any connected labelian group is isomorphic to g2 is isomorphic to something like this one plus this one cross some r to the power n so this is some k times actually i have last time i have stated this fact so let uh, g is equal to g1 cross g2 and h so okay let g is equal to g1 cross g2 so define uh, sigma from g1 cross g2 to g1 cross g2 by sigma of g1 comma g2 is equal to g1 comma g2 inverse so g going to g inverse is a group of our pgm if the group is abelian since g2 is uh, is abelian so since g2 is abelian sigma is an automorphism to the of g1 cross g2 and sigma square is equal to identity right so so let sigma of, okay sigma of g1 comma g2 is equal to g1 comma g2 if and only if g1 g2 inverse is equal to g1 comma g2 so that means this, this first component is really irrelevant and second from second component you will get that g2 square is equal to identity that g2 square is equal to e and so we get so g sigma is equal to g1 comma g2 Belongs to G1 plus G2, so that G2 square is equal to identity. So this first component is really uh, you can take any element of G1. So this is isomorphic to G1, but G2 square identity and G2 is really this. Uh, okay, so second coordinate you have to take all elements of G2 which are basically involutions. Okay, so G2 square is identity, but G2 is isomorphic to something like S1 cross S1 cross S1 k times to the power to the power n. So that from there you will get a G2 G sigma is equal to G1 plus minus one to the power k because S1 is occurs k times and this is correct cross G. Okay. Hence, so H I will take this is G sigma naught. Is equal to what? This will be really isomorphic to G1. This is sigma naught. This will be exactly G1 plus identity. Okay. Now add uh, E S is really add of G1 plus G2 and G1 plus E. Okay, so this is really add of G1 G1 plus add of G2 E. And second thing is I, I isomorphic to identity because G2 is abelian. So this is really R of G1 G1, and this is compact. Compact by hypothesis. Okay, hence, hence what we get. Hence we get that this G1 cross G2. And this G1 plus E is a Riemannian symmetric pair. And G1 cross E is really this is non-compact because G1 is non-compact because I have asked you that G1 is a non-compact connectedly abelian group. Oh, sorry, sorry. Not okay. Sorry, one thing you should be here. This is not abelian. G1 be any non-compact uh, connectedly group. So that R G1 G1 is compact, okay. and uh, G2 is any connected. Okay. 
So this hence we get that G1 plus G2 plus G1 plus E is a Riemannian symmetric pair. And since G1 is non-compact, so this H is also non-compact. And the corresponding, what is the corresponding Riemannian symmetric pair? And the corresponding RSS is really G1 plus C2 or G1 plus E. This is really G2. Tapendu, okay. is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So observe that here, actually, if you marry this G1, and you will get many, uh, infinitely many Riemannian symmetric pair, which has the same, which will give same uh, Riemannian symmetric space G2. Okay. So, remark. By taking, so, by choosing G1 differently. We get infinitely many many RSPs. Uh, so RSPs which give rise to the RSS uh, G2. Okay. This is the thing. Now I will. Uh, sort of I, I i will use another thing so now i will produce an interesting example so and this example is in sort of a lame example in the sense so let g comma h be a remanent symmetric pair with Involution sigma from G to G. Okay, so let uh, G1 uh, be any non compact connected group so that our G1 is compact. So there are G1, G, G1 is compact. So let uh, G tilde is equal to G cross G1 and uh, S tilde is equal to really H cross G1. So now define sigma tilde from G tilde to G tilde. This is by Sigma tilde of G comma G1 is equal to really sigma G G1. Okay. Now so sigma tilde G comma G1 is equal to G comma G1 if and only if sigma G comma G1 is equal to G comma G1. This implies sigma G is equal to G. So hence we will get what G sigma will be get. And this G sigma uh, uh, is really we will get what G sigma cross. Uh, oh sorry. Let us write uh, under. So the thing is, I am finding this G tilde sigma tilde. So. Okay, so fr from there actually I am getting sigma tilde g comma g1 is equal to g comma g1 if I don't have sigma g is equal to g. Uh, Muna, can you can you go slightly above? Here, sir. Wow. I got Okay, let g be h comma h. Okay. Are you are you listening me, sir? Disconnected. Uh, you uh, took g. Hello. Let yes sir. 
yes i can hear you but i can't see the screen uh, maybe i'm getting disconnected i don't know yes can yes. you hear me yes i can't see you it's just a blank screen okay just wait for a uh, one minute uh, on now are you able to see my screen yeah i can see okay so it is from sir's problem my, my you can see the screen yes sir this thing g tilde sigma tilde is equal to g sigma cross g1 okay now what is g tilde sigma tilde not this is really g sigma not because g1 is connected so i this is g1 right now okay so we know that this thing H is uh, H is inside this G sigma and G sigma not. Okay. Now therefore H cross G one is subset of um, G sigma cross G one. Subset of G sigma not cross G one. So this is really what uh, this is a tilde and this is really G tilde. Sigma tilde not G tilde sigma tilde. Okay. Now R G tilde is tilde. It's equal to really R G tilde. G tilde is what uh, G cross G one. The S tilde is really H cross G one. And this is really R G H. Plus R G one G one, and this R G H is compact by hypotenuse. This is compact by hypotenuse, and I have taken G one in such a way that this is compact. So hence this thing R G tilde is tilde is really compact. And therefore, uh, this thing G tilde is tilde is a Riemannian symmetric pair. And uh, since I have taken this thing G one actually is non-compact, so H tilde is non-compact. This thing non-compact. Okay, so this. Uh, So this means uh, this G tilde is tilde is anyone is symmetric and corresponding RSS is really G tilde mod S tilde. G tilde is really what? This is G cross G one by H cross G one, and this is isomorphic to G mod H. Do you want to see? Ah, S K R sir, are you? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, so I think so. Uh, you you want to understand this, right? So I am just uh, recalling this quickly. What did I do? This I could follow. Okay, you could follow. Okay, thanks, thanks. So this is a DP morphism, and uh, and here actually one interesting thing thing that if you choose G one differently, so. And there are infinitely many choices of G1. So you see that there are infinitely many Riemannian symmetric pair that is given to a same symmetric space. So, so very much. Given a um, 
given a remanence symmetry to a gh and gh is completely arbitrary there exist infinitely many rsp giving the same rsp giving the same rsp uh, giving the rsp g models so this is the thing the, actually these are some simple examples and uh, there is also another some com uh, another difficult example but i am not doing that uh, for instance the, you can read in that note there is a interesting example like uh, you, you have to take this sl2r universal of cover of sl2r and this okay so what what i am saying i am just mentioning that actually i could do this but it will take uh, at least 45 minutes or something but uh, you can read in that note also it will it requires little bit of algebraic topology let this sl2 r tilde be the universal cover of this thing cover of sl2 r so that means let uh, pi be the sl2 r tilde to sl2 r be the covering projection and this is actually homomorphism covering homomorphism this is a, this follows from some general thing so you what you will take this thing you will take uh, pi inverse let k k tilde okay You will uh, this is SL two R tilde, and this is really pi inverse SO two. Okay. So this you can show is a Riemannian symmetric, here. and this will be non-compact. And uh, what is the symmetric space in this case? The corresponding symmetric space will be. This is really SL two R tilde and uh, pi inverse SO two, and this will be same thing as really SL two R mod SO two, and this is really upper half plane. This is upper half plane. Okay, so this is an interesting example, but it really requires some covering space theory and little bit of algebraic topology. So this example is in that note. and all other examples actually are uh, really constructed by myself so so these are uh, okay so now we want to give another uh, example uh, another different example okay discussion let us see suppose uh, g is an abstract group g g abstract group and G of sum x uh, transitively. Then uh, for G belong to G, this L G x to x is a <coughs> defined by this thing. L G x is equal to G dot x is a bijection of x. so all of you know that so let um pi from g to symmetry to perfect with the map given by this thing pi of g is equal to really lg if this all of you know that this pi is a homomorphism so pi is a is a group homomorphism you know that now <coughs> definition this definition also you know so g is said to be so to be act said to act to be act uh, on x effectively or effectively so 
is set to be after mix i effectively. If kernel of i is really identity. Uh, what does that mean? This is equivalent to saying that g dot x is equal to x for all x belongs to g. For all x belongs to x, this implies g is equal to identity. So this faithfully and effectively are these synonymous words. These are same. Okay. Now let n is equal to really kernel of phi. This is really g belongs to g so that g dot x is equal to x for all x belongs to x. And this n is called or uh, in it n is called this is called this is really called ineffective kernel. Ineffective kernel or or unfaithful kernel. Okay, and this is a normal subgroup of uh, this since this is a kernel, clearly it is a normal subgroup of G. Okay, so N is a normal subgroup of G. Now the thing is uh, suppose so G acts on X effectively. This implies that uh, G is isomorphic to phi G. Thus, and phi G is a subset of symmetric A. Thus, we can regard, uh, we can regard G to be a subgroup of symmetry. Okay. So now uh, we come to our setup. <laughs> so let G comma H be a Riemannian symmetric pair, and suppose uh, and let Q be any G invariant metric on metric on G models. Suppose this G acts on G mod S effectively. Okay. So since this uh, actually G mod acts on G mod S effectively, and the metric is uh, G invariant, so therefore, okay. So since metric is zero infinite, thus we can. The G will sit inside this thing isometry of G mod X naught because G is connected. G will sit inside isometry of G mod X naught. Okay. okay. If this action is not faithful, we cannot say that G will sit uh, as a subgroup of isometry group of G by H. Now our question is something like this. Question. Is it true that so is it true that uh, G is equal to I of G by H? This is our question. So G comma H is a Riemannian symmetric pair and Q is a genuine Riemannian metric gene bearing metric on G mod H. Suppose G acts on, on G mod H respectively, then since the metric is gene variant, so G is sits as a subgroup of isometry of G by H, not, and we are asking is it true that G is equal to this thing? So answer is uh, no in general. So, 
Let us give an example for that. So example. So we know that this thing. Uh, that I of R n not. Is equal to very R n. So. So let K be any. Compact. Connected subgroup of S1. So then, so let G is equal to really R n semi direct product with K. Now, G acts on on R n. I have the map this thing. So you will take this B A, and this will act on a on an element of R n. By this a x plus b, where uh, a belongs to k, b belongs to r n, and x belongs to r n. So this is the my action. Now, you, if you look at this b a dot b a dot zero, this will be b. And this implies this action is transitive. This group action is transitive. Transitive and this action is also smooth because uh, the way and this is smooth. So now uh, claim this action is also faithful. Claim. So this action is also is faithful. So to show that, uh, suppose. Uh, B A X is equal to X for all X belongs to R N. So that implies A X plus B is equal to X for all X belongs to R N. I will put X is equal to zero. So putting X is equal to zero uh, above, we get this thing. We get this P is equal to zero. Now putting v is equal to zero in above, we get this thing a a x is equal to x. We get this thing a x is equal to x for all x belongs to R n. Hence, a this implies a is equal to R n. Okay. Hence, this v a is equal to really you are getting zero identity. Therefore, this action is faithful. Oh my God! I left some places here. Okay, so this is faithful, and this action is transitive. Okay. Now, now let okay, so so let uh, we like let us fill up it here. <laughs> so let. Uh, uh, H is equal to really stabilizer of zero inside the G. So this is really A, sorry, V comma A dot zero is equal to zero. So this will imply that A. Okay, this will imply that V is equal to zero, right? Hence. This h is equal to you will get this thing zero a so that a belongs to k and this is isomorphic or we can write this as really k cross k or oh, zero cross k. Let us write this zero cross k. Okay. So this action is faithful and this action is uh, transitive and uh, so we know the stabilizer. So hence uh, the map alpha from G mod K to Rn given by this thing. Alpha of uh, G A K 
to really be a dot zero, and this is b is a diffeomorphism. Now we fix a uh, any okay. This is a diffeomorphism. Now, uh, in uh, so let okay. Let Q be the usual uh, Riemann and metric on metric on R n. So then. Uh, then Q corresponds to a corresponds to a G invariant matrix on G mod S via the map via alpha. So the thing is, the way uh, actually from our best, the way we are getting this uh, the the diffeomorphism, we are getting this diffeomorphism alpha from G mod K to R n. And if you look at, uh, so there is an identification is going on. So G will act on R n, and G has an action on G mod K. This is by left translation. So this actually, if you will identify everything under this alpha, these actions are same, and this follows from your group theory. Okay, so you don't have to. Uh, okay, so therefore, if you take a, any usual invariant matrix Q on R n. So that is really G invariant because after all, this is a G is a subgroup of this isometric group. So what I am saying, so what I am saying that, okay, so Q is the usual matrix on R n. So Q is actually a G invariant. Why? Because uh, Q, sorry, uh, because uh, G is a subgroup of this uh, isometric group. So then the matrix Q corresponds to a G invariant matrix on G mod H by alpha. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so define this uh, sigma from G to G by sigma G A is equal to really minus of G A. And uh, so G A is equal to sigma of G is equal G is equal to really this R n cross K na. So this A belongs to K. No, no, I'm saying what is H? You wrote the zero H. H is this thing, stabilizer of G zero okay. inside G. Okay. This is really how I sum up to K actually. Okay. Are you uh, so is it clear everything or there is doubt? Yeah, yeah. Sigma of BA is equal to BA. This is really minus B A is equal to B A. So this implies B is equal to zero. Hence uh, G sigma is, is equal to really zero zero cross K and this is really H. Okay. And this is actually of course uh, H is compact and connected. Since this is compact and connected, this RGH is compact. Hence, we get this thing. And so we get this thing. Uh, what? Uh, this is. Uh, let us write this thing. Rn cross k. Rn similarly equal to k. And zero similarly equal to k. Or zero cross k. Can, you can write also. It is a Remanent symmetric pair and the corresponding RSS is equal to really okay. Corresponding RSS is I am writing this G mod H. Okay. G mod H is equal to really Rn plus K. Zero plus k, and this is really diffeomorphic to R n. So this and okay, so hence now what is this thing? Now this thing. So 
so isometry of g by h not this is really isometry of rn not this is really this is so and uh, this thing is not equal to rn cross k in general right? so this is really g in general for instance one can take uh, one can take k is equal to some s o n one less than n to two less than n okay so and in this case also you see that there are many riemannian symmetric pairs by choosing k differently which is giving rise to the same riemannian symmetric system okay Okay, so is there anybody who couldn't understand this thing? Okay, it seems I very <laughs> okay. I am not sure. Okay, okay. So one thing is, uh, this thing is in general, but this uh, this question actually, what we have taken, I have taken is a symmetric space of Euclidean type. If you look at I will define what is the symmetric space of Euclidean tabulator, but this answer will be yes if G mod S is a symmetric space uh, of non-compact, uh, compact or non-compact. So this answer will be yes. If, so we will not have time to prove this thing. If G, but it is good to know this. If G mod S is a uh, in RSS of non-compact or compact. So this is an interesting diagram. So, okay. So this uh, finishes Munaf. all. Yeah. Hello. Ah yes. Um, when you are Tell taking me. R n plus k, uh, you are taking hmm. k also a connected subgroup of S O N. Is there any particular reason to that, or, or are you using this set? Uh, connect uh, k is Can a connected subgroup. I think I am not using that fact. Yes, I am not using it because this H uh, fact uh, connectedness is not required. But uh, I just put it suggest so. Okay. So you can think about it if it is not needed. Not needed. I am not really worried about those things. Actually, I just wanted to give this example. This mm -hmm. uh, answer this question. Okay. okay so uh, there are uh, actually is this I will. Uh, so we will stop this example of. Uh, uh, we will. So I I think you are acquainted with some examples now, and uh, actually there are enough materials in my note uh, to really uh, to cover uh, enough material which will cover at least four and five lecture on Riemannian symmetric pair, but I have decided that. Uh, Uh, I will not do those things because time. I have some some. I have not much time with me. So, so for for that reason, we will actually move to some new topic called classification and decomposition of Riemannian symmetric sphere. Okay. And uh, uh, before that, I have to really answer the two questions which I have asked in a previous lecture. Okay. So. Okay, so let us uh, be, uh, to answer those questions. Let us uh, quickly go about some preliminary, so which will be required. So proposition, this is the thing. Let M comma G be a Riemannian manifold. Then there is just a unique affine connection nabla on M, so that it satisfies the following two conditions: G of nabla x y comma J plus G of y comma nabla x Y is equal to x applied on G. Uh, Of y comma j and nabla x y minus nabla y x is equal to leave bracket of x comma y. So this is so this connection will is called Lebesgue beta connection. So okay. So I have also stated this proposition earlier. Okay. But uh, what is uh, now actually I have supplied the proof. 
now what is important is this formula this formula 580 is important so g this gives uh, actually g of x comma nabla y j is equal to half g of lie bracket of x comma y and comma j plus g of lie bracket of y comma z comma x minus g of lie bracket of z comma x comma y minus x g y comma z plus y g z comma x plus z g of x comma y so this formula is a sort of important you just really this this formula say that this uh, a fine connection is uniquely determined by Riemann matrix that's all okay okay so you can read these things okay so now another thing which we will need is something like this thing so suppose uh, m1 uh, g1 is a Riemann manifold and m2 g2 is a Riemann manifold then i have told you that m1 cross m2 and g1 plus g2 or g1 cross g2 you can also write this is a Riemann manifold okay okay so let us write this g1 cross g2 so now suppose this has an uh, uh, affine connection nabla 1 it has a affine connection nabla 2 then the proposition will say that this product matrix will have affine connection nabla 1 plus nabla 2 so but you have to interpret nabla 1 plus nabla 2 in a suitable way so that is the proposition so let me read out that so this is let m1 comma g1 and m2 comma g2 be two remaining manifolds with affine connection lambda word and lambda two respectively then the remaining connection of delta uh, nabla of the product manifold m1 cross m2 comma g1 plus plus g2 is given by this thing del nabla of x1 plus x2 y1 plus y2 is nabla 1 x1 plus x1 applied on y1 nabla 2 x2 y2 where x1 and y1 is the vector are the vector fields of m1 and x2 comma y2 are the vector fields of m2 hence it follows that this gamma t gamma 1 t comma gamma 2 t is a geodesic in m1 cross m2 if and only if Gamma 1 t is a geodesic in M1 and gamma 2 t is a geodesic in M2. Okay, so this is the thing. Now I have this, this, uh, this thing. Let M comma G and N comma H be two remaining manifolds with connection nabla and nabla tilde respectively. And let phi M comma G, phi is a mapping from M comma G to N comma H via DP matrix. We say that nabla and na nabla tilde are phi related if and only phi star nabla x y is equal to nabla tilde phi star x applied on phi star y that is true hello sasi bhaiya hello no, no, I'm class le raha hu. Aap phone mat kijiye, please. Okay, so if and only if, uh, this phi star nabla x y is equal to nabla tilde phi star x phi star y. Okay, so we have defined what is the meaning of phi star x in the previous lecture. And in this case, we will write this phi star nabla is equal to phi tilde, uh, nabla tilde. If nabla and nabla tilde are phi related, we will write this like this, phi star nabla is equal to nabla tilde. If mg is equal to nh and phi star nabla is equal to nabla, then we say that nabla is phi invariant. Okay, so now let m comma g and m tilde comma g tilde be two remaining manifolds with levi beta connection nabla and nabla tilde respectively. Let phi from m to m tilde be an isometry. Then phi star nabla x y is equal to nabla tilde phi star x applied on phi star y. That is nabla and nabla tilde phi related. That means this uh, connections are well behaved with respect to the isometries. This is simply saying that. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this I have also given a proof of this fact. So now, Definition Let G be a Lie group acting smoothly on a Riemannian manifold MQ, Q with connection nabla. 
we say that nabla is g invariant if and only if lg star nabla is equal to nabla for all g matrix okay so so let g be a lie group which acts smoothly on a riemannian manifold m comma q suppose that the riemannian structure q on m is g invariant then the pre from previous proposition it follows that the lebesgue beta connection nabla is also g invariant so what i am saying that uh, so the matrix is g invariant means this lg belongs to the really isometry of m right so that from previous proposition you will get this lg star nabla is equal to nabla okay so this is what uh, it is saying okay so i hope uh, you have remembered this definitions okay so now so we want to answer this um, questions so so the what was the question that so question was so let uh, g comma h be a riemannian symmetric pair let uh, q and q prime be two g invariant so riemannian metric on g bar h on g mod h so is it true that uh, this g mod h q and g mod h q prime are isometric the so uh, i do not know whether anybody has tried or not this question Tapendra, have you tried this question? No, no, I forgot. Okay. So this question. So, so let uh, M G, uh, sorry, let M Q be RSS. Okay. Riemannian symmetric. Okay. Now with connections in Abla. so then this m if you then for any lambda greater than 0 if you scale the riemannian matrix little bit m lambda q is also a riemannian symmetric it is okay this is clear this is clear now it is also clear that uh, the geodesic will be same remain same and geodesic inversion will remain same okay so it is not difficult to um, believe that okay so now so let us investigate why this geodesic will remain same if you will scale the matrix okay and uh, let let us find out that what will be the affine connection of this m lambda comma q so what if you look, look at that formula okay so suppose you scale g by something by some lambda here sorry so suppose you scale g by some lambda here and this everywhere there will be lambda here so lambda will cancel out from both side so that will precisely mean that uh, this uh, affine connection will remain invariant under the scaling of the riemannian matrix okay so that means if you scale the riemannian matrix the affine connection will remain same okay so this is the first observation so any uh, also a riemannian symmetric with affine connection nabla this connection will remain same even now what is the definition of geodesic geodesic definition was like this that the delta of gamma dot t gamma dot t is equal to zero okay but since this affine connection is remain same so the geodesic and geodesic inversion will remain same since lebesgue beta connection lebesgue beta connection is 
is uh, in rem uh, remain same. Yeah, remain same uh, in both cases. Therefore, uh, the geodesics and geodesic inversion will remain. Now, therefore, uh, okay. Now, next question is something like this. Question: Is it true that this M Q and M lambda Q are isometric? So, answer in in general is no. Why, why this is known? Because there are certain invariant, there are certain invariant which are associated to Riemann and manifold, which remains fixed under isometry. And uh, if you scale the Riemann and matrix, then that will not be preserved. Okay, and one uh, invariant is Riemann and value. So, in general, known because. Because uh, this thing is uh, because Riemann and volume remains uh, unchanged under isometry while. Change while changes changes by factor uh, lambda to the power n by two under scaling of Riemann and metric by lambda. So the thing is, if a compact for a compact Riemannian man manifold, this Riemannian volume is finite. So, so hence it follows that, hence if M is compact, M Q is uh, isometric to M lambda Q. If and only if lambda is equal to one. So this answers uh, the the first question. So the thing is, if G mod H is a Riemann and symmetric space of uh, compact type, and both Q and lambda Q are really G invariant matrix, because this is a uh, G invariant matrix, then uh, then that, that that will not be isometric unless lambda is equal to one. So this answers the question now. Now actually this question I have to put in page 526 or something. So and I have also written there another question. So let us read that thing. So 526. Okay, so here is your answer is no in general. So now I have to answer this next question. So let M be a smooth manifold with two remaining structure Q1 and Q2 on it. So that Q1 is not a scalar multiple of Q2. Is it possible that MQ1 and MQ2 are remaining symmetric space? Supposing your answer is yes, is it possible that geodesic inversions are same? Okay. So, and I have also asked you to think about this question without using the above theorem. So let us answer this question. So discussion. So let M1, okay, Q1 is the matrix and lambda one, lambda one is a Riemannian symmetric. 
and m2 q2 nabla 2 is also a remaining symmetry this b now i i have told you that then m1 lambda 1 q1 and uh, this is also a symmetric space if you scale the matrix but the connection will remain in unchanged so this is is a given symmetric space and this m2 lambda 2 q2 nabla 2 is a given symmetric then this thing if you look at this m1 cross m2 and you take this thing lambda 1 q1 plus lambda 2 q2 okay. this is the just i am taking the product of these two remaining manifold this is also a symmetric space and the connection will be in this case nabla 1 plus nabla 2 is a remaining symmetric space so let uh, q lambda 1 comma lambda 2 is equal to C lambda 1 q1 plus lambda 2 q2 this lambda 1 and lambda 2 greater than 0 so it is so clearly it is clearly one can choose this lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 1 prime lambda 2 prime okay, greater than 0 so that q of lambda 1 comma lambda 2 is not a scalar multiple there not a scalar multiple of q of lambda 1 prime lambda 2 prime. it is possible so that means if both and what is the corresponding manifold here m1 cross m2 the manifold remains same the connection remains same but the matrix are different Okay, so so the, so it is possible to choose two different uh, remaining matrix so that one is not really scalar multiple of uh, other and this is a uh, that becomes a remaining matrix in those uh, into this two in those two matrix m1 cross m2 becomes remaining matrix but look at the affine connection this affine connection remains same so since since this affine connection remains same, connections remains same for all lambda 1, lambda 2, greater than 0. Therefore, geodesics and geodesic inversion. will remain same for all uh, remaining symmetric space um, m1 cross m2 q okay, lambda 1 q1 plus lambda 2 q2 and lambda 1 and lambda 2 get one so I hope this answer is uh, this clears the this throws some light on that question. On where uh, is there on there? Pushkida? Yes, yes. Is it is this clear? Exam this thing. Okay, so now let us say this. So let G comma H is a remanent symmetric pair. Okay. Now there exist many uh, G invariant remanent metric Q on G mod S, right? Okay, so and if the isopropy representation is irreducible, then there is a unique remanent metric 
जीन वेरिएंट्री मैनेजमेंट की और कुछ करल मिलते हैं सो व्हाट यू डू इफ सपोज द आइसोट्रोपिक रिप्रेजेंटेशन इज नॉट इरेड्यूसिबल नॉट इरेड्यूसिबल सो यू लुक एट दिस थिंग आर जी एच एक्शन ऑन पी एंड पी यू विल डीकंपोज टू सम इरेड्यूसिबल स्पेसेस लाइक पी वन पी टू पी के एंड यू फिक्स एन जीन वेरिएंट इनट आर जी एच इन वेरिएंट इनट प्रोडक्ट ऑन पी वन एंड दिस R G H in bar in invariant in order on P two and R G H in bar in invariant in order on P K. So you look at this linear combination of this inner product, okay? And you have infinitely many linear combination, positive linear combination, and so you get this infinitely many. It is possible that you may get infinitely many G invariant Riemannian metric on G models. so and the so let so so you get infinitely many g invariant riemann products on g model but the and the so for any matrix q g invariant matrix q you get an affine affine connection say lambda q okay. see the thing is if q is g invariant this lambda q is also g invariant but the good thing is this lambda q the the lambda q is will be independent of q this g invariant affine connection will be unique and why does this uh, why is this happening be this is happening because this this uh, connection nabla is invariant of the scaling okay. so i am putting that remark so so let G, comma H, B A Riemannian symmetric pair. So then there exists a unique G invariant affine connection. Connection on G model, independent of. Okay. So corresponding to to all G invariant Riemannian structure on G models. So I am not proving this statement. I am just explaining why it, why this result is true. So I also I have not really read this proof of this part. But it is written in the Helga's okay. to all gene boundary Riemannian structure on G, on G models. Okay, so then there is still any. Okay, so as I said that we will move to next topic now. Okay, so let us uh, just uh, give one or two proposition. Then I will. So the first proposition I will just put this thing. position so let uh, n be a uh, so descriptor uh, normal so proof of a connected uh, topological group g then uh, n is contains at zg where this is really center of g. so this is proof is very simple so let uh, okay fix x belongs to n so let theta from g to n be given by this it of g is really gx g inverse now this since this n is normal gx g inverse will be belongs to n okay, so as g is connected so theta g will be connected is connected now but since n is discrete and uh, theta of e Is equal to really x. 
right? So hence uh, theta g is equal to x for all x for all g belongs to g. So that means g x g inverse is equal to x. This implies g x is equal to x for all g belongs to x. So this implies x belongs to z. And this proves the thing. Now one an, another proposition. Let uh, G be a Lie group and H be a close subgroup of G. With okay, let let uh, this G is equal to Lie algebra of G and H is equal to Lie algebra of G. So first part is to this. So so suppose uh, H is a normal subgroup of G. Then this Lie H is is an ideal of G. Second thing is. Suppose uh, H is connected and S is an ideal of G, then H is a normal subgroup. The proof you can. Uh, you can try yourself or you can consult any Lie theory book actually i have I explained this uh, thing when i actually i was really proving this something like this thing rghp is uh, is subset of rghp is rghp is subset of p we have shown this thing this kp is subset of p where k is the ideal of H. K is the Lie algebra of H. So you have to use that. You have to use that just commutative diagram of this, which I have explained. So then you can try yourself or you can see any Lie book. See any Lie theory book. Or just see any book. So now this. Second, uh, uh, there is another fact. So fact, uh, so let, uh, okay, a Lie group is discrete. We found only if it's Lie algebra is zero. This is actually this is easy because you know that exponential map from this Lie group G to G is a, a, a diffeomorphism. This is diffeomorphism. Then you look at this exponential of zero. Okay, exponential of uh, zero is really E because Lie algebra is zero. If G is zero, this this E is open in G. Therefore, G is, G is discrete and converse is also easy. So you, this fact is uh, really the thing. Okay, so, so tomorrow onwards, I will stop here and tomorrow onwards, we will move to a new topic called orthogonal symmetric Lie algebra. And then we classify this symmetric spaces into three types, like compact, non-compact and uh, Euclidean type. And then we will do a decomposition theorem. And uh, uh, I think uh, we, we will not have, actually I am planning to give my lectures up to July end or end my lectures up to July end, up at July end, or I can go at most up to this August first week probably. Then 
uh, we will stop with this uh, lecture okay. so if, if there are any question i will be happy to answer this the hello Thank hello rajesh sir oh yes mona recording band kar dijiye aur thoda video dekh lete 